Hi, Tommy. You okay? Hi, Paul. Yes. Hi, thanks to you. Yeah, good. I'm, I'm, I'm Tom. I'm Tom Brunt. That's uh, Dave. Dave Roberts. Hello. How are you doing, Tommy? Yeah, fine, Paul. For you? Good. Brilliant. Good. Shall we, shall we start calling you Carol today, Tommy? It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's a good job she's here, because I don't know how to work with <laughs> Is she the technical whiz kid? Yeah, we've not got the grandkids with me. Oh, bless you. Listen, Tommy, it's, it's funny this, and I don't expect you to remember me at all, but this is going to sound a bit bizarre. So before we start the pod, um, you, you, do you still have your trophy shop? Oh, you, you, I used to with uh, our Paul years ago. No, no, we, it was, uh, we had it for a few years and then we, we stopped doing it. Oh, bless you. Well, yeah. um, my, um, you used to play golf with my Uncle Chris and, and Sandy Busby at Northern and Golf Club yeah. and a few, a few other places. Yeah. And I was, speak, I was speaking to my Uncle Chris before. I was like, oh, I've got Tommy Boo on. We've met him a few times. And I've, I've met you a few times doing that. You know, you do the walk rounds as the ambassador at the, at the club. Yeah. And I tell you yeah. what, mate, some of the stories that you come out with and you're so welcoming and warm, you're the perfect city ambassador. If, if City could like, if City could clone you tenfold, honestly, <laughs> all the fans in the stadium would go, go home with, with happy smiles, pal. So listen, thanks for being so kind and uh, generous with your time last time I saw you. Absolutely. No, no problem. No problem. Um, you're a good, you're a good man. But yeah, thanks for joining us, Tommy. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'll, I'll be brutally honest. I was born in '82, so um, your your last ventures within City, I've had to do a lot of research for. I've known about you for years. You have to, if you if you don't know about Tommy Boob as a City fan, then you're doing something drastically wrong, as far as I'm concerned. Mister Man City, is it 16 years at the club? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I have the testimonial there, and uh, yeah, played under a few managers as well near the end. Yeah, I just, want to, I just want to run through your role of honours with what you won at City. So, you won the first division winner as 67-68, uh, FA Cup winner, 69, European Cup winners, Cup winner, 70, League Cup winner, 70 and 76, and obviously the massive one, the Charity Shield in 72. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've got a hell of a record there, Tommy. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, 70, 74 as well. What was 74? Have I missed one? What have you done? Yeah. Newcastle. 74 and Newcastle. Missed that one off here. I mean, your, your, your record. League, 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 league Cup. That, which was it, 76? Oh, I'm out again. Which was 74, 76. 76, was it? 76, 70, yeah, 70, 70, 70, 76. 76. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, for, listen, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. We really appreciate it. And what, what we're going to do today is just basically go through your history, a couple of memories. Um, yeah. Obviously, you've got. I mean, we've only we've got an hour and a bit. Let's face it, probably probably a bit less. And with your history of knowing City and how long you played for us and the stuff you've won for us, I think we could we could fill up two days worth of content. So just, <laughs> just jump in with any memories that you can uh, you can still remember in the old grey cells, pal. If that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So you, you turned you turned pro for City in '67. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Age eighteen. Yeah, it was one all. It was one all draw against Arsenal. How how was that from signing the the? Obviously, you were you were with City for a while beforehand, weren't you? And you turned pro. How how did that work out? Uh, I was with I was with City. Uh, I, this is when I fell out with my dad for the first well the first time and the only time uh, I was uh, just on, at, at school playing for Manchester Catholic boys and Middleton boys, and uh, City came along. And uh, Harry Godwin and said, so we'd like to sign you as an apprentice pro. And I was over the moon and I went home and said to, to my dad, oh, I think you're going to get a call. And he got a call. He said, no, no, my son's not uh, signing uh, apprentice pro because I need, I need him to get uh, a career behind him. So and I, th I said, I'm, I was in the background. I said, what? What do you mean a career? He says, no, apprentice perfect. But, you know, you're not doing that. If you don't make it, You've got nothing to fall back on. So I went as an engineer. Is that so right? Apprentice engineer I went and said, so I said, what I did, I started playing on Saturdays for the club in the A&B team. And Tuesdays and Thursdays went training. And on Saturday when the lads, when the lads used to come, and we all used to get together and they'd been, they, the lads who had been signed as apprentice professionals had been training all week and seeing the 
the, the so-called stars then in them days. And I tell you what, I didn't speak to my dad for honestly, it was a long, long time. <laughs> but in the end, he was he was he was right in the end, whether he knew it or not. Because uh, come seventeen, when you're the, when you're the, not an apprentice, they've got to make a decision. And they signed me pro when I was seventeen. Where when you're an apprentice pro, you don't sign your pro till you're eighteen. So I started talking to my dad then after that. Bless you. Yeah. Did he did he come and watch at the games? Oh yeah, come and watch me at the games. Yeah, yeah. I used to play at uh, the the old, you know, the old training grounds, Platt Lane, and Platt Lane, yeah. yeah, I used to play them grounds. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it was all different, all different ball game to uh, nowadays. Like you know, where they got the academy and God knows what. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, I've been round there. If you've been round there, like it's it's unbelievable what they do for the kids today. And if the the kids don't make it. They try and find they try and find them and uh, another club, you know, in lower leagues. Like you know, they look after them really well. Now, was that the dream, Tommy? That you know, from from being able to kick a ball around, it, was that the dream of, of of playing professionally and playing for for Manchester City? Yeah, I mean, it's it's everyone's dream. I mean, we had a good team. We had a good team in all that uh, in the. Uh, at school, you know, we sort of won everything. St Mary's, we won, won, won all the trophies. And I played for Middleton boys and Manchester Catholic boys and that. And you just hope you're going to get a chance. And uh, fortunately, I did. And I uh, got a chance and got in the team when I was 18. And uh, it just seemed to take off from there. You know, I mean, I'd, I'd won, like, some major trophies by the time, you know, in, in the two or three years I was there. In the first two or three years was there and uh we're saying that I must admit I, I got into a good side. Yeah, it <laughs> wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad like, you know, it's just that the, the centre of our position was a bit iffy, so uh, I stepped in and uh glad to do the job. Yeah. It's um it's it's funny, isn't it? Because I I watched I watched a lot of videos about City. I'm a bit sad like that on on YouTube and, and wherever I can also gonna find it. You every time people mention Tommy Boo. Yeah. You think like the hard man centre half, but you could play. You oh, could yeah. play football. There's no doubt about that. You you, uh, you, had, you had a stint in midfield at one point as well, didn't you? Was it was it Skipper put you in midfield for a game? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd had a I'd had a back operation. Uh, at some like seventy seventy five. It was. I had a back operation, and uh, it, they didn't know whether I would, I would be able to play again. I ended up having three disc out. And for about two, three months, I was laying on my back and I thought, never mind about playing football, I thought I'd never walk again, you know. But uh, eventually I got fit and uh, then Skip says, because I think it was Mike Doyle and uh, Alan Oates who were centre-backs at the time. And when I came back, uh, he put me into midfield. I was on the bench and Colin Bell got injured against Manchester United, if you remember that. And uh, I was the sub on it, and he just said, Tommy, go in midfield. And I thought, midfield? Anyway, I went in midfield, <laughs> and then I ended up staying in there. And then we went to the cup final and uh, the League Cup, and we won the, won the League Cup. And I played there all season in the midfield. Were you, were you always a defender, Tommy? Yeah, I was all Well, no, when I was school, I, when I got signed from City, uh, I was play, I, I was the centre forward, well inside forward, and uh, so it was Malcolm Allison who decided to put me to centre back, and I just I just said, "All oh, right, yeah." This was when I was like 16, 17. seventeen, so uh, I went to centre back. Yeah, brilliant. It's and funny. That was, that, 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 that was the lead up to and then to everything. Like, but initially it was that, and then uh, I always say to the lads and all when uh, I took over from Colin Bell. In midfield, yeah. I said, "All oh, it says, uh, all the fans says he couldn't really tell the difference between Tommy and Colin Bell in midfield, except for the colour of my hair." And if you believe that, you believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's you, I mean, if, to, to to have such a dedication that you did to City, I mean, a couple just to just to just to blow your trumpet for a couple of minutes is some of the some of the, the phrases. Obviously, we're doing a lot of research. We tell people, but we're talking to people, and some of the phrases that people have said about you: committed, brave, loyal, 
a ability to play and, and, and absolutely dedicated to City. That must be lovely, knowing that people think about that, about yourself. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, uh, I mean, I still go around to the city supporters' branches now and all, you know, because uh, they all like to hear the old stories and the old, yeah. the old tales and that. And uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, and I had a, I had a great, uh, great rapport with them. You know, the fans were the fans were brilliant with me, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was great, great. And we won in them days. We won, uh, we won the tro- we won quite a few trophies. Yeah. I have a nice, I have a nice little memory, Tommy. Here, I've got a, a good friend of mine, Eric Jackson, uh, who I used to work with in Manchester, uh, a bit older than me. And he said, uh, one great memory I have of Tommy Booth is a late season game at the old Victoria Ground in Stoke towards the end of the seventies, seventies uh, early eighties. Uh, you'll remember the Tommy Booth song that praised Tommy's ability to be in the right place at the right time. You know, he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, "I'm not sure who was in goal for City, but he was injured and substituted at half time as the teams came out for the second half. Tommy emerged wearing the green jersey as he ran yeah. towards the end where the bulk of the Blues were standing. The chant began: He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Uh, Tommy Boo, Tommy Boo, even the lad himself started laughing as he took his position between the posts. Uh, That's right. Uh, I mean, I, 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 honestly, I remember that honestly, and uh, it was Joe Corrigan who got got it. Was he really? Yeah, yeah, and I came out, and we were getting beat, getting beat one nil. And when we came, I came out uh, second half, and uh, all the fans were behind the goal, and they're all chanting my name like it is. And, and I remember going up to him, you know, waving, and then I, I just made the sign of the cross. I thought, oh God, no! <laughs> they all started laughing like. But the best thing, and this is a gospel truth, the first cross came came over. And the lads like, you're Tommy. And they came out and headed it. I headed the, seriously, I headed the ball. And then all the lads like, you I went, oh, oh, yeah, 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 forgot, forgot. And I went back and all the crowd behind were killing themselves laughing like. But, so I must admit, I'd have been, I'd have been better heading it out than catching it, to be honest with <laughs> you. Brilliant. But we ended, up, we, we ended up drawing one all like, you know, and so I always rib Joe Corrigan now, say, because we say, like, who's the best keeper you've ever played with? You know, to Barnsley or Ace or all them lot. And they all say, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Just to wind Joe Corrigan up, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Who, who are the best players you played with during your time at City? Because you've played with some superstars, let's face it. The list must be endless. No, I mean, the, the team we had, I mean, I mean, I was at, the lad passed away, uh, Glyn Pardo, I went to his funeral uh, last week, and Glyn was uh, the youngest player ever to play, make his debut at, I mean, I think he was about 15 or something like that, and he was a centre forward, Glyn, and it was Malcolm who, no, 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 he's not a centre forward, he, he played him left back, you know, how, how the hell do you do that, from a centre forward, you know, to play left back? Like I was inside forward and said, no, you know, you're not center half. And Malcolm used to do that with uh, quite a few players, you know, in the day. But, uh, yeah, there's some, I mean, then you got, you got the likes of Colin when we got in from Berre. You got Franny, Franny Lee, Mike Summerbe, Neil Young, you know, great players. And then you got Alan Oakes, Mike Doyle, you know. Fantastic team to get. You know, when I got in the team, like, but the only thing I will tell you, lads, when I got in the team, you would think they would, uh, you know, give me give me a little leeway if I made a mistake. Oh, I tell you, the looks you used to get of Alan Oakes, Doyle, Glenn Pardo, as if to say, you do that again, you, you're dead. <laughs> Honestly, they used to have a right go if you made any mistakes, like you know. But great, great side, that great. Side. Was that a definite winning mentality then when you joined that, that, that team? Was yeah, that, yeah, it was, it was with Malcolm and Joe Mercer. I mean, it was good. I mean, Malcolm did eventually take over from Joe, and uh, the board said to uh, Joe Mercer they wanted him to come on the board, but Joe Mercer wasn't ready to do that. And uh, at the time, he just thought, right, Malcolm wants to be a manager, he can have it. And Joe left, and which was. If anything, Malton was a great, great coach, but he wasn't a manager. 
and right. that them two together hit it off brilliant you know they, they'd have, a, have a, what they was going to do uh, and then they'd talk about it and then they'd send, send us out there and Malcolm was a great coach but wasn't the best man of you just a, like, a comment here. We're going live. We've had a couple of questions come in, Tommy, as you can imagine. We've yeah. got uh, a fan of the show, Bill Barton, mentioned, Tommy, I was behind the goal when you scored the winner against Everton and Villa in the FA Cup semi-final. The fans never yeah. stopped singing your name. Brilliant. Yeah. That, was, that, was, that, was a, that was the stabbing goal, wasn't it? Do you know that goal? Do you know what that goal reminds me of? The goal you scored? I don't think it was more of a stabbing. Do you know when Yaya Torre scored against Stoke in the FA Cup? He just ran yeah. up and latched onto it and just smashed it into the into the into the net. It reminded me a little bit of that. But you, was it left footed? Your goal? It was left footed. Yeah, left-footed, I mean, it was, it, it, it was the last minute. Yeah, last yeah. Minute. And uh, just before the corner, Neil Young had gone through with his left foot, and we thought, you know, he's got to score Youngie, you know, because like, he was a great finisher. And I think it was Lawrence, who got, the goalkeeper, made a great save, and we all thought that's it. It's going to be a replay. And it was last minute. We went up for the corner, and uh, I think, yeah, yeah. Neil Young took it, and he came across. Max Rudby headed it down, and I remember the ball coming to me on my left foot, and I'm about to t- take it, and someone behind me, I think, yeah, it was Colin Bell behind me, said, "Leave it," and I thought, "Leave it." I thought, so. <laughs> I said, "You lot couldn't hit a barn door all day like I'm having a go when I bang the internet, get in." <laughs> The striker's instinct from the sixteen-year-old came to came to came to the roof. Love it. Yeah. That must have yeah. been amazing for you. That must have been an amazing experience. But the, the coach ride home was fun. Yeah, I mean, it was brilliant. We, we stopped. They took me out. Uh, I must tell you, uh, we got to Manchester, and a few of the lads says, "Come on, we're going out." And I went out for the drink with them. They don't forget, I've just turned eighteen, and. <laughs> These lads could drink, I'm telling you. I mean, they, 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 they taught me how to drink. <laughs> and I, 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 I remember getting home. They put me in a taxi. And I, I lived on Langley at the time. And there was six houses either side, like, on, on a walk. And I was in the middle one, number six. And I remember getting out of the cab. And I, I, I just about got to the house. I'd scored the winning goal. We're going to Wembley. I knocked on. Mum and dad came to the door and it was, where the hell have you been? What <laughs> time do you call this? And give me a belt across the head and send me to bed. <laughs> yeah. no. I mean, you, you just can't make that up, can you? I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah, that, honestly, they did. And the best thing about it, my mum and dad had gone down to the, the semi-final and left five minutes before because he said, oh, it's going to be a replay. <laughs> so they missed the goal. Oh, no! Oh. Yeah, so the did, did they see that on the uh, match of the day, I think, because um, then <laughs> you know, later on, I, I said, You missed the goal. He said, Yeah, I wanted to get back here. Yeah, so. Do you know what? I think I would have had to have lied to you. <laughs> <It's what? laughs> I think I would have had to have lied to you and say I stayed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> unbelievable. I bet that yeah. hangover lasted a few days then, didn't it? Or you straight back into training then? Uh, I think, uh, no. Th- do what I mean, they did. I mean, they, they, they was some some great lads there. Uh, like, and uh, it was my first time of uh, having a few drinks, and uh, I certainly suffered the next day because uh, the press came round and they knocked on the door, and I was still in bed. And my mum runs upstairs, get up, get up. The press are downstairs. He wanted a word with you. I came downstairs, says Tommy, we want a few pictures. We've got the kids in the street who live with you or live live near us. And I went, all right, just a minute, like. So get up, get up to the top, get changed, get up to the top. And they've got two or three balls of press lads. And they say, right, Tommy, what are we going to do? These lads are going to chip the ball to you and you edit back and we'll get a few photographs of you. And I thought, edit back on me. And I felt shocky. I felt awful. I was really ill. And he just says, what are we editing it back for? I said, I didn't score with me. I had a score with me left foot. He said, I know, but it'll make it better, you know, Scott. It'll just make a better picture. I'll tell oh. you what, lad. Every time I edited the ball, it took about four to five takes, you know. As it was. Every time I did it, I was nearly throwing up. Sorry about oh, that. They, they weren't like balls either, were they? <laughs> they weren't like balls, no. Still had the laces in. <laughs>
Okay, Blues, I hope you're loving our little chat with Tommy Booth. This is the end of part one. Uh, what I'd ask you to do is, it's the four-parter, so please obviously watch the next one by all means, but if you get time, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're listening to us on a podcast, um, go over to iTunes or your, your uh, podcast player and leave a review for us and give us five stars. We would really appreciate it and it helps people find our podcast so much easier. Again, with YouTube, click subscribe and you'll get automatic notifications of when we put out new shows. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon.